Hello and thank you for joining with us tonight. Uh, welcome to this evening's devotional. I trust that you're safe and well and that Wednesday has been a really good day for you. Can I invite you to join with us on Zoom later for a time of prayer when Derek Malcolm will be sharing something of his ministry with us. So that will be immediately after our short devotional this evening. Families have been uppermost in all of our minds over the last number of months for obvious reasons and there are a number of verses in 2 Kings I would like to read just now that detail an account of one family's experience with God. 2 Kings chapter 4 and I'm going to read from verse 1 down to the end of verse 7. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbours for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and afterwards shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. So she went and told the man of God and he said, go, sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. About a year ago, uh, yeah, about a year ago, I began researching my family tree. I started by compiling names and dates, going back over about 150 years, but with little understanding of their lives or backstories or even who they were. The more I researched, the more I have discovered about my family's real lives, their joys and sorrows and ups and downs and highs and lows. And I'm discovering that while their lives were hugely different, they were also very similar. Going back even further to Bible times, we know that people's lives were hugely different, yet I believe remarkably similar, like the family we've just read about in Second Kings. We're back in the time of the prophet Elisha, and scripture places him in the second half of the ninth century. So we're going back almost 3,000 years years ago. And of course, Jesus spoke of Elisha in Luke 4. And I'm always encouraged to read in the New Testament of Jesus speaking of people we read about in the Old Testament. They were real people with real lives. But imagine the scene for this family back in Elisha's time. The wife of a member of the company of prophets has just lost her husband. He would have been well known to Elisha, who perhaps felt a sense of responsibility towards his widow. In the midst of the idolatry that characterised the nation of Israel, there were people who did not worship Baal, who did not worship the false gods, but worshipped the one true God. In several cities, for example in Jericho, uh, there was a community of God-fearing men who met together to worship and to pray and to ask God for wisdom, for mutual encouragement and instruction. These groups were known as the Sons of the Prophets, or Company of the Prophets. And with Elisha being God's major prophet at that time, he would have had a close connection with these groups and the men in those groups. So it's no surprise that this man's wife cries out to Elisha because he was God's representative. Her husband revered the Lord. He was a faithful servant of God and Elisha. She's heartbroken, grieving for her godly husband. No doubt confused and not only but now with no means to support herself 
and her two sons. And if not bad enough, her husband's debt is now legally her debt. So her sons will be required to labour as hired hands, with their earnings being used to repay their late father's creditor. So you can see why she cried out to Elisha. You can hear her saying, why do bad things happen to good people? A question that has been asked for ages long. But what does Elisha say? Tell me, what do you have in your house? An important question is God would use what she had to start with. It's a reminder of the young chap who brought his lunch of bread and fish to Jesus on the hill slopes of Galilee. And of course the miracle that followed. And so Elisha instructs the women to go to every neighbour and ask for empty jars and pots. That wouldn't have been easy. What if people were to ask awkward questions? Imagine it. What's it for? And when might I get the jar back? Well, I may be returning it very shortly, she may have thought, if this wasn't going to work out. She may have felt doubt, but she acted and took that first step of obedience and trust. So mum and her two boys, back and forth, bringing by empty jars, whilst all the time wondering what's going to happen next. They're back home, the doors are closed, surrounded by empty jars. The room full of them. Elisha, not there. So she takes her small jar of oil and begins to pour the oil into one of the borrowed jars. Use your imagination for a minute. Picture the scene. For me, I would confess, my faith would have been that of a mustard seed. I'd have selected from one of the small borrowed jars to pour into first. Certainly not one of the large jars. But as this dear woman exercised her faith, the oil kept coming as she poured. And the oil didn't run out. The family ran out of jars. The oil stopped flowing when the last jar was full. She went and told Elisha, and he said, Go, sell the oil, pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what's left. Does this family's experience from 800 years plus before the birth of Jesus sound familiar to you today? We can surely relate to this Old Testament family experience. A family who took a step of faith and obedience and trust. Who, while feeling doubtful, persevered in faith and trust. Doing what they could and trusting God to do in his will what they could not, who experienced God's abundant redeeming grace that completely met their needs, and who as a result of God's intervention had a testimony to share with neighbours and a community who had seen what God had done for them. 3,000 years on and we worship an unchanging God. He calls us to trust and obey him, to exercise faith, to persevere through doubt, to do what we can for him, to trust God to do that in his will we cannot do, to experience his redeeming abundant grace and to share our testimony with others of what God has done. May God bless his word to our hearts this evening. And join us in a little while on Zoom to pray and hear something from Derek Malcolm of his ministry. Stay safe and well. Thank you again for joining with us this evening and have a very lovely evening. Good night. Music